Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen and now we're going to paint some roses and some lavender color small uh, uh, daisies and stuff to kind of put them together. I kind of have an idea what I'm going to do with it, but we're going to evolve the painting as we go. I have a, um, a, a Super MDF panel here. It's 11 by 14 uh, wood and I just gave it a coat of uh, a light gray color, which is just titanium white, a little yellow oxide and a little black, or you can use a light gray and a little uh, medium white from our heritage line just as base coat colors. Put those together about one to one, just make a nice light uh, kind of warm color. And I use this as just a foundational color. I changed the background with it so it, you know, it, it can change real easy. I'll be using some of the Painted Simply colors here and, and from the Painted Simply and Art of Painting where I have um, my uh, six Painted Simply colors out, which is my white, uh, red, violet, and the wo very warm naphtha red light, some Hansa yellow, phthalo blue, black, and uh, the auxiliary color which we use in the Art of Painting called pine green. I will also have out some yellow oxide and some um, burnt sienna. Whether we use all those, I don't really know yet, but those are the colors that I put out just traditionally onto the palette that I paint with. A lot of times I paint with the six painted simply colors and sometimes I add some others. And also in these series, I'm also teaching you about diox and, and um, quinacridone violet and a few other pigments. So we'll, uh, we'll have some fun. I'm going to take my three quarter inch fusion brush here and I'm just going to put out some extender onto the surface. And I like to paint, when I paint all the Prima like this, and I paint instantaneous, and I paint fun, I like to put something wet into the background. And so I like to take a version of the of that color here. Now my white that I have here, all my colors, my white has kind of stiffened up here quite a bit. It's uh, into this uh, container here. You can see it's pretty chunky, pretty stiffened. So let me just show you here what you do sometimes with that white when I'm going to be painting with it. I like to leave it chunky like this for a lot of my painting, but this is just a little bit too thick. And so to reconstitute it back when it's chunky like this is I'm just going to just slide this over and do this right here real quick. What I'll do is I'll just pour a little bit of clear extender out here into this. And my palette's at a slight angle, so we'll run here for a little bit. But, and then I'll just whip this right back up in. A lot of times I do it right into my container here, but my container's a little full, so I'll put some of it out onto the palette. And you just kind of mix this all back in here, and that'll make that nice and creamy here. I still want to leave, I don't want to make it runny. I just want to just loosen it up a little bit to to make it easier to work with. So you can see I just whip it like this and all of the little chunks and stuff are going away as I just whip that all up and equally mix in that extender. So you just gotta kind of whip it here like this a few times and it just all becomes nice. And I wanna leave it though thick like this and uh, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. We used to have to do this with oils all the time. And uh, now I do it with the acrylics like this because yeah, we use exactly the same pigments and stuff that they do in the ground pigments that they do in the oils. And so we have some of the same working consistencies as oil. So now I have this nice, very thick white. This is how I like to, to leave that. When I go to do it over here, since I have some room in here now, I just pour some extender back into my container like this. And I just use the end of my brush and kind of mix that all up here. And, and work that around and around and around and around until it gets nice and worked up again whip it all up in there. You just need to make sure you have some room in your container and I had overfilled this one quite a bit, quite full with paint and I hadn't used this uh, palette for about a week or so so this white kind of chunked up. The other colors don't. All the colors that you have, uh, we have in the line there, they're of course all individual chemicals and individual chemicals dry at different times. And so, you know, like this white has been out just as long as my red violet over there, and the white will dry up fast. Your white, your umbers, and everything dry up a lot faster than the others, and that's pretty good on that. I'll just leave that. And uh, out to the to the uh, side there, we'll push this up. I'll use, a, I'll use quite a bit of that. We'll put some of the extra back into the container at the end. But colors have different drying times on it. And so, you know, like this is my red violet, which I haven't touched. And see, it's just very creamy and very nice, very beautiful to work with. And so it has like a six times, it will dry six times slower than the white will. Okay, so you'll notice some colors, the umbers and stuff will dry faster. Other colors will dry a little bit uh, slower. So 
uh, and they will all be a little different depending on the pigment so but white always kind of gets chunky and I like chunky I, I like to paint with the chunky but that was just a little too chunky okay so I'm gonna take some of that light white down here I'm gonna add some extender to it here as we can work on our background and I'm gonna start adding some colors here into my background and I'm gonna just kind of loosen this up here for a second and put some some working colors on here let's step back just a touch more here and I'm going to loosen this up, and, and I, I like the whites and these grays, and sometimes I like a, a warmer type yellow. Now, yellow is going to be into the flowers that I'm envisioning, and it's going to be into the, the centers, of course, on our little daisies. So we might want to put a little bit of that yellow into the background. Sometimes I will say, okay, if I have yellows into the background and yellows into the daisies, I'll put a complementary color, some violets or so into the background to cool that down so I get a, a nice temperature play against the color so in sometimes in my backgrounds I'll use uh, you know uh, harmonious colors like what I'm doing here and sometimes I'll use contrasting colors so here I'm just using a little harmonious color and we'll play this white up here we might add a few other little tones in that in just a moment as we kind of decide what we're going to do um, in where I'm going to have some of the flowers I'm going to uh, come in here and I'm just going to, let's just push in some green here. Now see it when I push into this light here and it'll be really nice. We'll just push in some of this color here and we'll push this down and around here like this and grab some of this movement out here. This is what I like to have, this type of movement into my paintings. I like that, and, and a lot of you have written me and made comments and stuff on Facebook and stuff that you enjoy those types of movements. This is how I go about them. Sometimes I do it here with like a, a, a knife, and I'll take and I'll drag this down through and down and across like this so I get... The thing is, as I set up these backgrounds, I want to set up some variations, some differences uh, within the colors and within the background here. So, um, you know, I'm looking for... Uh, different types of things. Sometimes I'll use a knife, sometimes I use the brush, and I'll use different colors and stuff. And so it's, uh, uh, it's a building process. And what I'm going to do here is just build this here for a little bit. So maybe I'll drag some of this yellow and green right down here like this. Let's just drag some of this down here. So I've been doing a lot of this this last year, vertical lines pulling down. If I have my flowers and stuff going at angles, I'll pull vertical lines. And sometimes I make such pretty little backgrounds, it's hard for me to cover them up with flowers as well. And so it's it's kind of difficult sometimes. It's kind of fun to play your backgrounds like this. And what I'm looking for again is, is uh, here I'm carrying kind of some compliments through the painting here. But, uh, and we'll drag this off at an angle here like this. But I'm adding some modeled interest to the background. So it's just some yellow oxide. We'll maybe lighten that with a little bit of white. In some areas, we might just use this yellow oxide a little bit more pure here and drop some of that color out here like that. So that comes out so you see bits of that. Uh, some of the green a little bit more uh, pure in through here and you can see I move my line if my flowers are going to sit kind of an angle I'll move my line up and down and and uh, horizontal and vertical here like this so I get some uh, differences so I'll have differences in the line here so we'll pull some of this down like this and down here I'm working these colors it's this is really kind of fun to play like this to find shapes and forms and uh, it's it's almost it's very impressionistic to it to the background here down let's take a little of that soft yellow back up in here maybe back up in here and these could be back flowers something going on back there just soft softly but we have to also think we're gonna have white flowers so we've got to get some contrast up in there so you know, we might want to build a little more green. Maybe a, we got very, very warm colors in here. So let's look at cooling this down. Now we can cool it down. The blue, even though thetal blue is warm, and a lot of people think it's cool, it's, it's warm. It's a warmer pigment. Your thetal and your ultramarine blue are warm. They are cooler, though, than what I'm using right now in the painting. So it will appear cool. So I'll add that with a little green and a little white here. Let's create kind of a cool tone here, and let's apply that cool tone right in here and that will help contrast my my flowers as well right into those areas there so let's apply some of that cool tone 
right here. It's a nice variation right against these warmer greens here. And we'll just go right up like that with some of those cools. That's kind of pretty. And we'll grab some cool right over here. Here, work that through there. Maybe down through here, we'll streak a little bit of that cool. I like to play, you know, I like to do what I call spark colors like this. Spark one color right with another one there. And especially like that, that spark of the cool right against that warm there like that. That looks nice. There, It's a very different type of background. Very fun to, to play with and paint. And uh, let's do a little brush modeling over here. Sometimes we'll just soften some of those, those colors out and just model them out here right where I'm going to be growing some stuff. So I'll get some different looks. So maybe up here it gets a little softened out with the brush here and like that. And so you get textures, and that's the beautiful thing about some of the paintings is I look for textures and and edges and movement and stuff. Um, other colors that can cause some contrast in here for us, in the center of the roses is going to be like the burnt sienna type color. So I'll take a little burnt sienna. Let's move that right into um, this green. And let's just drop a little bit of this. This is a nice contrasting color right down in this area and it can also be used to create like woody stems and stuff like that to roses and flowers and stuff like that so it's kind of good to have some of this into our into our background maybe mix that up also it 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 cools and darkens very nice with some a little bit of phthalo blue and this is where my contrast is going to be this is where my main flowers are going to be so i really want to develop some nice contrast and we're going to come back in here and do a little bit of what I call negative painting that I, I wrote an entire book, Mastering Roses with Negative Painting. And uh, so we'll do a little bit of that negative painting and we'll use some of these tones as well. So now I'm kicking it up. Now you see you got warm tones and cool tones, tonal variation going on in here. And and I'm but I'm thinking it's it's kind of planned here. I'm this that I, I want to get some of these warms and cool tones playing against each other here. And I want to keep some small little touches of this, this tone disappearing back out through there like that. Okay, so, um, and these just add little sparks. Now we can also spark that. Sometimes I will do that as I as I paint. I will spark this with with my brush out like this into little little corners and or losing corners and edges of the brush and stuff. So. That works really well that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint some roses here. So I'm going to paint a rose up into this area. So I'm just going to back out some of my color here and push this rose out like this with my finger right in this area where I'm going to have this rose. And this will push in and incorporate some of that color here into this rose, which is what I want. Some of this background color is going to come into the rose. I'm going to open up kind of an oval shape of a rose here. Okay, so, whoops, drop, drop my little bridge. I always have this around too. It's a little wood bridge that I put my hand on. Sometimes when my hand is, is really wet, I'll work on that. And I don't have to work on that small of a board here right this. I can do this pretty, pretty fine, but I keep that around and it makes a little noise in the background sometimes. So I'll put one there and let's put this other one right in here. Okay, and I'll just touch and push and wipe some of this. I, I can take some of this out and push some of this out of the way here like this. And But I want to keep some of this color in here because this is a, a nice toned base for my, my rose that's going to come down this way here like that. Okay, so down that goes here. That one will go in. Now let's drop in uh, um, its deep center. So I said I wanted to have some burnt sienna into that center. So I'm going to use my number eight flat here. And I'm just going to come down. And this is where that center of that rose is going to be there. This is uh, right in here is where that center of this rose is going to be. And I want this one to lean up just a bit here. So, And then I use my finger. I paint with my finger a lot when I'm in the early part of the paint. Well, actually, during a lot of the painting, I... I use my finger a lot. I use it to soften my edges. I paint a lot of what I call lost and found edges. And uh, so, I, and since we're using non-toxic acrylic paints here, the Heritage is completely non-toxic, you can go ahead and paint with your finger as much as you want. It doesn't hurt. 
anything. Just go wash it off with a little water later. And uh, I'm going to move a little bit of this cooler color out here. Some of this movement out like this through there. And plan that movement so that will go in there. I'm going to take a brighter yellow. Let's go with a Hansa yellow here. And let's put some of this right around into the center of this yellow, of this rose. Let's drop some bright yellows in there. And this uh, beautiful little white roses, opened up rose. And uh, I love to paint roses in all stages, from spent roses all the way to young buds. Uh, they, you know, just all the stages and the different stages are opening up and some were, are very round and some, you know, opened up and the petals have a lot of fall to them. And I plan on making a falling petal here. So these are, these roses are opened up quite a bit. So I'll stroke some of this in here. Build some of this color pretty thick in here. That's what makes them pretty. Get some bang, some power to some of that color there. And just take the corner of your brush and restate and tap back in a few of those darks back in there. We'll work these colors around. And we want colors to change. So maybe we take a little warm red and we'll put a, a little tone of the red in there as well. I'm looking for, you know, it all depends on how much work you're going to do on a flower, but you want a lot of tonal change. And so I'm putting in some warm. I can drop some red violet in there, which would be really uh, towards the cool side of the, uh, the painting there, which I put over here. So I should put that back in my palette. Um, if I've put in a shadow or something like that, a little red violet as a real cool little area, tap a little bit of that in. So I got a, a plane of some warms and some cools that would help some of my painting. Take that red violet with some of your, you know, your blues and your greens here. It makes a nice cool darker color. We can use that down to the low side underneath here. Just make some beautiful cools and some contrast for us to uh, paint our petals of this flower out into right there like that and I'll I'll draw use sometimes these kinds of colors here and just use the edge of my brush like this some of these nice co cooler tones and we'll just draw in some shapes just with the edges here and um, of some stems like that movement through but that pine green red violet a little bit of blue red violet will cool it all down blue will also fill it cool here you can use that for some nice contrasting here and pulling some of that we have some nice daisies we want to paint in there but we can use that for down here some real cool contrasting maybe we'll we'll paint a leaf or two coming off here off to the side like this we don't know yet we'll drop that in but that's where my two roses are going to go i see that pretty clearly i always carry a paper towel in my hand and i'm always wiping it okay here now and to the back side back here you have we have a real light background so sometimes when I'm on a real light background back there I will use the darker colors towards the back of the flower it works really well how are you gonna make your grays for this rose well we have a lot of greens and a lot of our burnt siennas and reds here so I will probably take those together here and maybe even a little touch of our blue I stay away as much as possible from black black and white and I'll look to that to make some grays here a little bit more of um, red violet maybe a bit of blue into this just because it uh, is cool and we'll look to the back side back there of that I'll make a nice grayish type of tone and we can use that tone back here to set up like the back edges of a flower here and I'll, I'll get a little bit of extender into that thin that out a, a touch there and we'll just set up some back grays, work that edge just a bit. I want to keep that kind of soft there. And we'll work some smaller little edges here. And around and around, we'll work some of that tone, some of this yellow out into that. That gives me an idea there. It's not a completed back petal there, but it gives me a little idea. Maybe I want to make this just a touch bigger here and uh, a little variation to the shape here like this of this coming back maybe a little edge here to that one there there we go and that just 
So you gotta, I gotta watch it sometimes. I tend to, my habit is to grow the flowers pretty big and I wanna stay away from some of that. I'll just make a soft one right in here, right back behind that. Nice little soft one and we'll drop some petals down here. How they're gonna come out will be a little bit lighter, but I like these colors going in and out now in this area. I like them going in and out. In other words, the leaf colors go into the flowers and the flower colors go out into the leaves here. And I'll put a little bit of a cool shadow here that my lights will play up against here. There we go. Now we can start to add some more whites here. I'm just going to take some of these greens and yellows and push them off to the side here for a second. I'll be using those into the colors. I, I'll use that into the flowers here as well, but I, don't, I want to have an area that I can really kind of get light and white here that we can come in and start to really draw in some uh, petals, some striking some petals here for the, the rose, like up and around the, the front, the saucer or the, the, um, the, excuse me, the teacup of the rose, the cup of the rose, the bowl of the rose here. And we'll just tap with the corner of our brush. A little bit of movement here. And we'll come in and around. And put in a little bit of movement here to the rose. So I pick up that little brush right there. That little little bit right there. And I can use that to help draw in some petals here. Just like that. Just And it, that thick paint, that thick white just lays off perfect gives me a nice edge and I touch and I lift off just a bit right before I get to the where that other uh, petal is there so I leave a little bit of the underlying color there as a shadow there like that that works pretty we'll come over here let's drop in the front of a rose here the front rose petal coming out like that so I'll pull across like that and then I do what I call negative painting lifting out and, and giving the shape and the movement to the petal here that I want like that. And I wipe my brush quite a bit on my paper towel, taking off some of that excess paint and stuff around. So we'll drop in a petal here and just lift off right as it comes into that one. And I can come back and put on more white, like right up here like that, if I want to have a wider petal there. And then lift off some of that. So I reveal some of that underlying color. A little edge here. Let's pull that back like that. And we'll let some of this sit soft back here, but we want to go to the, uh, we'll let just a little bit of white. Now that's a bit much back there, so I'll just take some of that out, lift some of that out. We'll let this, but I want to leave that gray back there. and. I will add just a touch more white back here to uh, set that petal, that back petal there. And <clears throat> maybe take a soft yellow, a light yellow into the brush and I can softly move this color in and out of the center a bit to just soften up the colors around the center to where that incorporates those colors, the flower colors, into the flower there. and. Then we'll go back into our light colors, our white colors here, and let's put an edge here to this particular petal and pull that in like that. And sometimes I'll put a shadow color on it like this and lift back out, especially if it's a lower petal. I'll lift off some of it like that so that I can put another layer of petals there in between the flowers, in between the these two petals there. Let's go back up here to the light side and drop one or two right in here like this. Here, up on this, let that white just kind of fade there. Maybe just an idea, maybe this one's bending down here. So we just bend it down with our brush, our movement of our brush here like that. So that petal bends out like that. And down, we'll lighten this edge of this one a bit. You can drop in any of your cooler colors there and use those as like little gray shadows. Any of your any of your leaf colors will help this flower keep its transparency here. So, and that's what I want this flower to have, just a bit of transparency here. So that's why I'm 
taking putting on the white and then taking it off so I go grab some of the colors here let's grab some of this little cool color that's right over here put that on your brush and then lift that right back off here and let's restate a nice cool green uh, red violet kind of shadow back in here like that deepen this one and just work that color out a bit there that gives me a nice area and this is what I like to do I like to work the colors like this like I'm going to take a little uh, warm yellow and um, a bit of uh, yellow oxide and a bit of uh, um, Hansa yellow together and put a little warmth right out there and then let's just state that white right in there again and then we'll lift it out with a little cool and working the petals like this several times that's where you get all the beauty and the working of the tones and the colors there Let's shape the bottom of our bowl here. Let's get that shape in there that helps make it a rose, that, <clears throat> that bowl shape in there. Let's add a few smaller little strokes back here, which would be the like little corner of your brush here, just little edges here. This would be the smaller petals lining up the bowl there. So we'll just give a, we won't paint perfect petals, we'll just give a little line for them, a little indication of them here. We'll take some of our thicker white now. Let's come in here and let's make another set of light petals here. So we'll just go bang right here. Now trying not to line these up with the other one. And the other thing I keep in mind is these are the larger petals. And then everything else here is is got to get smaller. And to the smallest petals are inside the bowl. So I will put that color out like that. And we'll work this out, lifting that out a bit there and you can shape some of the bottom one here again as well you don't have to just because you have a petal in there doesn't mean you can't come back out here and add like a little light or another little color on there but I want to make this one come out a bit like this like it's coming out so we'll add some light there right against that edge nice textured white very thick paint I'm using right now okay so that sets that one up there Maybe just a little corner, you can draw like a little edge of a petal here. You know, maybe that reaches around like that. Now that kind of reaches a little far than I'd like, so I'm just going to take some of that out here. Just soften that just so it's a little bit right there like that. That's nice. Maybe give it a front edge though here. But it's just playing back and forth. I put on and I'll take off and I'll play back and forth like this to get what I want. Sometimes I do it what I call very limited strokes. I plan my strokes and I do very limited strokes. And uh, that's a different, a totally different look to the flowers. And so like I say, I paint all different kinds of techniques here. So, but I like to build them like this. But I'll do all kinds of techniques. Now let's put some more up to a bowl right here build that bowl right up in front let's close up the front right here as well build that up so we got that flower coming up here we'll just round that bottom bowl just just a bit there bring those let those petals start coming in here together you can feed these petals down in and, and around and make it look like it comes around uh, a little bit more but um, that gives it a more a pure shape a lot of artists impressionist artists won't give it that much of a pure shape but I I kind of like it and my customers like it so I do it quite a bit I'm going to add another little petal right down in here just let one sit in there we'll restate this shadow right in there I like that shadow there I just want to rework that shadow a bit nice cooler color in there let's just grab that Maybe uh, even a bit of our burnt sienna, which is the center of that, with a little bit of that red violet to help cool that off. Yeah, that's pretty in there. So I'll, I'll put that on. I'll wipe some of that off. I'll work this out into the flower here and work some of the light back into it. I'm always watching my colors. And there we go. Then we'll edge with a little white. Let's build that air, that petal up again right there like that pull that in let's build the petal right there in front of it boom right there in front of it got a little 
chunky there, so we'll take that off. Just go boom right in there like that, build that up. Now I'll wipe my brush and I'll lift that color off because I know underneath that is that shadow I just did. So I'll lift that color off and that will shape that petal there. I'll give the impression of the shape of the petal. Let's give just a little impression of a petal back here. Let that just sit back there because the petals get quite big back here. Here we go. Just a little light and dark. And that's a pretty nice flower here. Built up here. Like that. Sometimes I'll put that shadow back in there, nice cool. And we'll stroke that right along the bottom there, the bottom of the bowl, and lift up. And that helps you get a little bit of bowl shadow around the shadow to that. But vice versa, I'll pull the white down too. And I'll do this a couple times, just lightly, gently. Kind of coach it down there. Coach pulling that down like that. I lost some of that burnt sienna. I want to put that back in there. I kind of like that little tone in there. And build maybe a nice little petal like that right in there. So it makes a nice flower. Let's come over and work on the other one here as well. We'll take it, we'll maybe make it just a little bit more toned. Let's put on some some color right here for the bowl of that of uh, this particular actually I want to turn this one up a little bit as well so not turn that down quite so much that way I want to have it up so it's the bowl would be pointing up at this angle here let's just reset that a little burnt sienna a little cool color back into that so I don't like to line them up, but I don't want that this one pulling down too much. If you get them opposites too much, then uh, they will um, they'll put in a situation I call divorce. They're they're moving your eye in both in two different directions, and your eye, the viewer's eye, can't settle on the flower quite as easy. So I want this one to come out at this angle like this. So here comes the the bowl up and around like that but it doesn't sit at exactly the same angle. Maybe down just a little bit more. We'll, we'll increase the height of it and lower this down just a bit and so I can look at the angle that pushes. And that's a, that's a nice angle right there that I see on that flower. And uh, we'll take some uh, thin color, some thin light, and we'll just put on just the impressions of light petals back here. Just some thin light gray and greens that I know are back here. And just some idea of those petals. Some uh, idea of some petal shapes here. Those. We wanted to make a almost like a spent petal that's folding down. So we want to put that in. But I want to keep that, <coughs> excuse me, that green going in there at the same time. And I know it's a building process. I know I have to do this several times to get the shapes and stuff that I want here. But now I have this other rose to go against. So I'll take this, uh, this colors here, this burnt sienna and a little bit of the red violet to cool that. Maybe a bit of that green in there, that nice gray tone. Let's reestablish our shadowy bowl down here, tone colors. Sometimes I'll just do this, especially as the flowers to the outside, I'll start to do this with my finger to start to work those tones together like that, deepen that softness. And then just use the edge of the brush out here like this to create some petals here. Just poke it into a little color and create some light petals like that. And of course, always watching it now against my main rose up here. I can make the front of this lighter here like that. And, uh, but uh, when we come out to these petals here, we've got to compare them against this uh, other one here. And it's got to go underneath. So I'll take some of my cooler color there and push, lift out some of that white until I see this petal starting to go underneath that rose there. Or I can take a little bit of light like this and restate the light right on the, the front side of that row so to make sure that that whole part of the row stays way up on front of that one and just slide your brush around like this and you'll 
you'll um, see that shadow coming back up underneath there like that. So pick those petals up just like that. So it looks kind of nice. Let's develop a little wiggly here to the, the petal here. You know, it's a, not all the petals are exactly perfect. So, And I have a tendency to sometimes, because of all of the years I did stroke flowers, to make them perfect, you know, stroking petals. And I don't always like to do that. So I like that right there. That's that's a nice contrast to some of that. We'll pull some of that, leave some of that edge there. And we'll push another petal out here like that. That's kind of nice. Always go back towards some of that bowl shadow color here. Cooler color, restate some of that, pull that out. And again, I'm using variations of my greens and my leaves here. So it carries it into the flower and keeps that nice softness going there to it. Here we go. Out like that. And uh, we might, because this is the front side here, we might make a, a little bit more of a light petal here. And just pull this out. And you can leave streaks like that or you can soften it out. It all depends on how uh, important you're going to paint this flower. But I'll restate like this several times. And because that's what's giving me the movement, sometimes I'll take it out with a little bit of shadow. Sometimes I'll put some yellow back in there like that and get some of that warmth into there. And uh, maybe I'll take some of that warmth, that yellow and stuff, and we'll push that right in here like that to uh, restate some of that bowl there of that one. And then drop the bowl petals right back up on top of there again. All kinds of ways you can build it. You just got to build the round as part of the bowl here. This is pulling down here. Yeah, like that. And... Um, Build this front part up a bit more, but it's got to go a little bit more um, shadowy as it heads over to the other flower here. So that looks kind of nice. Let's put some smaller because they get smaller as they go into the inside. So you should have some smaller suggestive petals as it, the flower goes down in towards the inside here. And I'm just going to push that around with my finger here for a moment. I like it. I like to do that, especially on these outside flowers. Take a little bit of light softness, smaller petals going down in. My mind is now thinking smaller, younger petals. They're not mature. These are the big mature petals out here. These are the big guys, the folding down ones here, and and uh, the big color carriers here of the of that rose. And so they're falling down. Let's push this nice big opaque white, opaque opaque white right up here right across there like that so that really comes up front and pull out just a bit get a little bit of that movement there that's nice we set this bowl again pull that out maybe just a little edge to suggest like another petal there yeah that keeps that fun but I like this I like transparent flowers like this they're really fun to kind of paint so we got some whites in there some definitely some some nice whites in there and we can come in and spark some of this white with some nice warm tone boom here comes some nice yellow warm tone in there take that yellow right into that flower let's take that yellow boom right into that flower there i wanted to get some yellow in towards those centers as I come out like this, out of that center where I had that brighter Hansa yellow, I'll switch over to my more toned and more opaque yellow here, the yellow oxide, and drop some of that in. But maybe little touches of the brighter yellow here and there. And see, it just adds so much to the flower. Then I'll just put a little white in my brush here and just soften those together. Not blend it, just stroke a few. And it's what I call incorporate that color into the flower. So you're not blending it together, you're just putting a little light right on top of that and just incorporating it into the flower there. And we'll just set that bowl up there like that. Let's take that warmth right down into this flower. That's really pretty. And 
and it keeps the flowers from getting too white white as well so um, which I don't want to here because we're gonna have some nice you know uh, colorful daisies here so we want to um, do that now this is something I don't normally do just work on the roses here without working on daisies and colors but because I usually change my mind but I so I may come back and work and change my mind on these roses as well and we'll just lighten back up into the front here a stroke or two or a movement or so there like that okay so now we'll come back over to put in some daisies now we're going to use some some uh, red violet we'll warm this red violet with a little bit of red here let's get this beautiful colors here a little red violet a little red right into some of our whites here we'll use this into the areas here which we're going to have some daisies and I'm just going to spark around with this color first the daisies are going to be the accents to this and we'll put some right out through here like this coming out some ideas of some back here maybe they get a little more tone the color isn't quite as bright out here little bits of it coming up like that okay and uh, we'll change the tone a bit we'll add some some red violet to it change up our our daisy tone here We'll push some, we're going to have a, maybe a daisy here pointed down, and um, one back out over here, pointed back that way, touch, maybe some back ones back here, just little, just smear them right into the background. I do this, I, I just color spot, color carry around, carry those colors around, and uh, I like to, to just play the colors into the backgrounds back here like this so you know it could be soft back ones back there soft light push some of this color around into the background let it just kind of incorporate together there there like that but we also need some nice contrast of our red violet boom put some of that in there that'll contrast the greens and the other colors we have in there and we'll also contrast some, some greens, some pine greens in there, okay? Uh, we'll take some of that red violet, maybe a bit of red. Then we can start to shape some of our daisies. Now we're going to imagine like a little center here. And then I'll pull out the, the petals here. And if you turn the flat, this I'm using that number eight flat. If you turn the flat at different uh, angles, you'll make different sizes of strokes here like this. And so some petals I'll put out here more uh, perfect and some petals I'll let them stay uh, very soft and sometimes I'll go back and forth several times like this so I'll soften that back out and then I'll push the daisy back out again here like this so I get some color movement back and forth and so I, I never really paint a flower just once I move it and then I'll incorporate it into that movement and take some of those in and out remember I said I paint in and out when I paint in and out like that and put some of those colors in there like that and then um, we'll come back in and shape the petals even more but likewise when I do this I like to always move color a little bit so I'm going to take a little <coughs> touch of this pinky kind of color and we'll add just a little touch here and there into our white roses here as that carries some of that color around here, maybe this back edge of this petal here can be into that a little bit more. And that it, it takes the colors of the daisy right into the rose here. And it'll harmonize the two flowers together rather than having them sit, you know, um, opposite or, you know, in contrast to each other. They'll get a little bit of harmony. We want some contrast because we want these two colors. I want this violety color to play against the yellow and the rose. That's because they're complements. And but we also want to uh, get a little bit of harmony. So and we'll push a light little edge, a little daisy sitting down, little daisy colors in here. And we'll get some of that nice darks in there. I'll play into the center. This is getting towards your center of interest in here. And this is where I get a lot of depth of color. So I play back and forth with my colors. And I may come back in here and do a little, like I said earlier, 
I will come in and do a little negative painting every once in a while, which is using some of this daisy and this dark color here now, green and these things and these colors here, and come in and shape like the back edges of these flowers here with some of these colors here that are in the daisies, and that pushes the rose. See how it pushes the rose forward? So I may put a little bit right back out in here like this. Maybe that color comes out. Might spark a little bit of that right in there and and drop this down out here to this side. And that looks kind of nice. Maybe a softer, but a little bit lighter color back in here. And that'll push that up. We can also do it with a soft green if we're gonna push some leaves and stuff in there. So we can uh, do it with a soft green here. And uh, let's go back and, and add some more daisies. Well, we, the daisies we know are going to have yellow center, so I'm going to start out first with some yellow oxide here on the brush. Just pick up a nice dose of yellow oxide there. We'll toss that into that center of the daisy. This one's going to go that way. So now I got, be careful, I got two of them there going the same, almost the same way there. But we'll maybe put one right back up here. We'll put an idea of some soft daisies back here. So I'll add a little yellow over there. And you can see how that just carries the color over there. And um, we'll have a bigger one right in here. A big, full, mature one right in there. We might pick up a little bit of yellow of a back one. So right in here, I just might just put some leaves and stuff. But I might have the idea that you see some back daisies back there. That's the kind of stuff I like to do. And I'm just going to build back up my stems out here a bit more, a little bit more stems. Since I'll have lots of daisies and stuff coming here, I'll give them lots of nice stem movements there. Some I'll make a little thicker and uh, out a little bit more with the brush. Sometimes I use my knife, my palette knife for this. to get some different uh, looks that way to it. Let's uh, get some of our cool color out here with a little bit of that white in here. We can use that to kind of shape up a daisy or so out here. A little, just a real soft suggestion of the daisy out here. Step back just a bit here. As we start to set some of the dimensions of these here, maybe just a few little petals out here is all you're going to see. And then, then it just gets pushed in and out to soft little color there, like that. You might have, um, now you can make the fronts of it come forward with light, or you can make the fronts of it come forward here with some dark as well. So we might have some little dark strokes like this that make the uh, front of that daisy come forward like that there. And soften another one or so right out in here. Maybe there's a little bit of a movement there. I like to just work the painting now. After I set the main interest of my roses, I kind of work the painting and work the shape. So now I'll, I'll add some greens in here. I know these guys have got to have some stems. So I'll add some of that uh, look of stem in there. And um, I just start filling up and playing the colors here and start to lighten up and area. Maybe we'll pick some light some real light little colors here, and we'll put a light color turned one right in there like that. Then I'll take a little green, maybe a little yellow into that, and just give it a little calyx there. So the little calyx comes back like that. Maybe a little line or so here that goes off to that side there. So you can put that, you can bring the petals forward with light or dark, and, and I'll do both here or just some of this red violet right in here just works nice to set that front of that one up and uh, tap in a little yellow around the center just keep that kind of soft back there those guys back there they're a little even so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a light color here light cool color some of my background and I'm just gonna soften this one back here just touch more, move that color out like this, and let this one just kind of soften out, um, <clears throat> get kind of lost out here 
a bit into the light here. Maybe some light. This is where I start to work my background again too, work in some of these colors in the background. Or I might take some of my white and my yellow here right with my knife again and work some of those in to that background. Lightening up some of that there and around and through. There like that. Sometimes I'll take those light strokes to get more light and energy and, uh, and spots of color. I'll just drag some of that right down in and through into the into the between the flowers there as well. So there's a thousand ways you can do it. It's I but you know I've got my center of interest right in here. I want to paint these softer than I do over here. So up here in the front, let's drop some light and some pink here. Let's put the light front petals onto this one. So we want this one to be kind of turned, but kind of light up here into the front of it here. So we'll have some curved little petals off here like this. Here. There we go. Maybe let some of that come into light here onto the edges. And then we'll let it pick up its dark. Now I'm going to do that again. We'll probably stroke a little dark from the base. Here. So I'll work the petals a couple of times. I do, I always do. I never just, I never just work it once because I like to get the colors moving in and out several times here. In and out several times. Working the colors in and out here to get these nice, that nice little flower there will, um, maybe streak a little bit of this light out through there that gives a, little different look to it here and let's streak that dark in and out here there like that and that in and out there you got to be careful because this thing starts to grow and if that happens and that's starting to grow if that happens just take some of your background in and push that right back here take some of your greens and your cool colors here and it just all adds that interest back in there. It all adds color movement back in there. We'll push that back. And let's get that front of this one back in again. There like that. And reset. Here. I do this a lot, several times. If you get the books and stuff on me, you'll see many times I will reset a daisy several times. Uh, you know, looking at it in, in the, into the uh, rest of the painting, how it looks with the rest of the painting as well. The movement of the, of the, of the daisy. Now, the ones that I was going to envision here, we're going to have a lot of petals. But that's really not, that's really kind of fighting that white rose. So I really got to keep it softer here. And um, I want to, and that's where your good old finger comes in. So I kind of like that, maybe just a, a little bit more of an edge or a light or a stroke or two out here to suggest some petals here. Some petals just like that. Here is all that little that little daisy might need here. There. Let's go a little more red right here so we have the darker coming forward there like that. And that's kind of pretty. Maybe a, a bit more curved uh, white or so here coming out and that will help anchor it to the white flower as well here that's kind of pretty coming out like that let's put our yellow back in there our yellow center back in there and we can have some nice haunts of yellow tapped into that so we get a nice brighter yellow in there and the one daisies that I was thinking of, I have also a little touch of red right into their very center, which um, makes them kind of pretty. So that looks pretty good coming out like that. There. Here, we'll put just a touch of light there. That's not too bad. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a minute again. And we'll put some of that light right in here. We'll stroke a few little light strokes coming out of these here. There, like that. So we get those colors down. There. Ideas of movements back in here as well into the rest of this uh, area where there might be underlying daisies and stuff. We'll just put in some movement here. We're going to 
put some leaves on top of it, but this movement will sit underneath it here. Just some movement of the colors. Take some of that movement out here. That daisy movement. I don't like to paint daisies unless it's in the center one like this. I don't like to paint them just round. I like them to be kind of oval shaped. That gives action to it. They're turning. They're moving and turning. Here, let's get that a little darker. Here, we'll put a few shapes in and around here. Like this one. Maybe right up there like that. And you don't have to paint the whole daisy. You can just paint half of it here and let the other half just kind of fade away out there like that so it sits into the background. Maybe there's a real soft one back here. And I'll just put in some of the movement, push in and out like that with my finger and just let some of that maybe have a, a little bit more definite movement on this side which will bring it out towards you and we'll let that just sit real soft there into the back and that sits as a real transparent little daisy there and we'll add a soft little yellow center there not too much into that maybe just a little touch or a little idea of our reddish type of center into that maybe just a bit of Hansa and that yellow just a touch of it in out there just to say we did it there that's fun I kind of I, I kind of keep moving and keep moving and I'll come back and refine something if something bothers me and generally I get some areas that just really bother me I'll come back and revisit them in just a little bit I don't worry about it I just keep moving if you worry about something you just paint it over and over and over again and it just gets stiff don't worry about it it's, it's going to change with other things other things around it is going to help change it so I don't worry about it and I if I can't see it clearly I'll come back and visit it again in just a little bit <clears throat> so we'll grab a little red here let's touch that little bit of red into that that looks pretty good let's let's pump this shadow up on the bottom side of this one there just that shadow up there and maybe I will put a little lighter stroke on one or two of these little petals here. Out like this. So we'll get some of this light movement. They, the ones I was looking at have real light little movement out from the center here. So we'll just give an idea or impression of that. I like these edges though to get lost out here with some of these daisies. And this is a little sift here, so I'll just move my color in and out a bit. That loosens it up. Now let's pull some light strokes out here. Different edges, angles going around there. That's nice. And you can negative paint into there as well. Now I'm going to be doing some negative painting here, some greens and stuff. And so I want to vary my green. So at some point we, we you know we've been adding a lot of cool green so i'm going to take some pine green and some yellow uh hansa yellow here make a brighter kind of yellow green that i might use in a few areas up in here as well maybe touch up in here and get some brighter color up in in lighter spot color here so nice warm bright yellow green little touches of it in here and um that will um, make some of these change some of these daisy colors here. You you know a beautiful f uh, floral will have all kinds of colors of leaves and stuff in there. So you know we'll have some real deep, rich, dark rose colored leaves and some of these other brighter daisy color petals and stuff coming out here like this. So I might put a a stroke or two of some of this warm out here. We might get very yellow green and add a few little touches of this out in here. Let a, let some of that come out so with those daisies there. And that's what makes a painting pretty. If you use the same green everywhere, which is a natural habit for a lot of artists that are you know just learning, it, the natural habit is to use the same green. And and that's one of the things I always tell my students. You know, vary your green. I'm going to cool this down. 
take that pine green and over the other side here cool it you can see the difference between my greens right in here and I'll use a cooler green and maybe over here on this side we'll take some of the green and we'll do more of the rose shaped leaves here and we'll so we'll paint more of a pointed leaf here maybe just take our finger and just go like that to take the edge off of that so we'll I'm gonna that paints a little tight so I'm just gonna loosen it up just a bit with its extender so it doesn't get too opaque on me and I'll paint in to the center here pull in like that and create that rose leaf and then I like to just go like this just go like that and just take the edge of that leaf off and the rose leaves usually go out in the threes like that almost like a trinity so we'll pull one in here like this at this point and we'll take that off, slightly take that off a bit there. So you get a little bit of the rose shape of that leaf. Let's drop another one right down underneath here. Here. So we'll put in a nice oval shape to the rose leaf here. Right in there. Pull this one out maybe. Leave it a little softer. But see now we'll have some, we'll have some, um, we'll get a little darker here. A little different green. So we'll have some leaves that are, uh, very yellow green some of the rose leaves will show up here which uh, see it just adds a nice variety to the composition let's lighten that up a bit with some of our lighter background maybe a little blue into this color so I make a softer green maybe a bit of burnt sand in there tone that down or this pinky color so it makes more of a grayed color see how grayed that color is here green gray and we'll put a rose shaped leaf back in here coming from underneath that one maybe but it's a little grayer so it's not quite as green and see that adds quite a bit to the composition and we'll take that one off just a touch there like that take that side off here maybe uh, little touches of leaves here out like that little edges of those little shapes here and out so you'll have some nice shapes some perfect shapes some very casual shapes here and ideas of little calyx here nice little green idea of a calyx going there onto that pushed side of a rose there idea of some stems and stuff coming here maybe a few darker colors I like that dark cool pine green and red violet and even a little burnt sienna and that's such such pretty colors burnt sienna warms it back up a bit but that just makes such pretty little leaf and you know touches of color here so we can come around like this and you can even use this to kind of shape up your flower a little bit here back and forth there with those to push that color around Maybe shape up the edge of our petal of our daisy there. Touch here, pull that out. And uh, yeah, it just works. And just work it. Work, work, work it a little bit. Here, grab a bit of that here down like this. And we'll pull some of this down. And then I start to do my little brush dance, which. Uh, I take some either some darks or some lights here and I just kind of move those through the the painting here like this adds little sparks sometimes I do it with the light uh, like a you can add a little spark what I call a little sparkle of color like our little lighter violet color here is kind of pretty out through these here out there like that you know maybe I take some strokes of that just boom right in through here and it just carries that little spark of light down through this part of the flowers there. And I, I it's building it. See, I'm still building some. Here, we'll build that little idea of that daisy there. there we go. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll look for other areas like maybe I want to have just a little spark of that color sometimes just a little spark of the light in there also with it right in there just boom 
right over some of that leaf, right through there like that. And that just kind of sparks that color around. Some yellows would be nice too. Some nice sparky kind of yellows here. Sparky, is that a word? Spark, spark some of that yellows in there. You know, they just grab some of those lights there like that. There, just just the ideas of these little daisies here. Just boom, and I'm gonna pull that color out here. There we go. Just round like that, and I want to have on that bottom side there just a little bit more of a feeling of the daisy petal itself. So I'm gonna put in a little dark here. And push this back and forth a couple times here to to uh, to rearrange that that petal here just a bit. There we go, and push that out like that. And then just pull these out just a touch like this, so I get more of that daisy type of shape there. Let's put some right underneath that low side on that one there. But I like that because I have that yellow right there. I like this real red violet right here as well. Just right there by it. That looks kind of nice. So it's building. When I go to paint like this, you know, sometimes I paint these really fast. Sometimes I kind of build. And, you know, this one I had kind of an idea. I have a few flowers up, you know, uh, pictures of flowers up to get some ideas of. But... Uh, you know, you don't know exactly where you're going to go with it or anything like that. You just kind of slowly, you know, step into it and start painting it. And so now I'll come in and I can do a little negative painting to help shape some of my flower here. And I want to give some variation to the shape. Maybe a little bit of my red violet here like that to vary that shape there. I like to have nice clean edges right up into this area here. This is your center of interest, so I get those edges nice and clean. Here now you can put a big rose leaf across there. We can uh, put just grab some nice bright yellow green here, and maybe a bit of light into that. And we can just drag a few strokes of that in there as well, just to set a lighter yellow green up on top of that area there with some darker greens. And so this is just an area of the flowers and stuff, and you know we. Might have just a bit of a idea of a petal here and there just sticking up through because this is a whole bouquet of it so you don't see all the flowers right away. And some other ideas of other ones back here. Just soft, 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 soft other flowers back here. Back here like that, just little touches of those colors. And you can put, sometimes you come in here and I put a white rose or something in there. That would be pretty as well. But I'm going to put a little bit more of a green in here. Not a specific shape, just a little bit more of a green. Then we'll put a nice cool shadow, red, violet, and green, right up where it's going to go underneath that rose there. So then just pick out maybe a couple other little areas here to do a little negative painting here that will pop the edges of our rose out here like that so that pops that rose forward I don't want to get outliney so sometimes I'll take the soft pink and come in and just take some of that out so I don't want to get outliney or anything like that and where it gets too outline just softly suggest that in there And we're going to softly suggest some of these back light colors. Little, where's the daisies? Let's put, let's switch this one to light here. But uh, because of the the busyness of the daisy, I've I've painted these more soft, my petals more soft, so that um, I don't distract from the softness of the roses. So. My original plan was to paint the daisies quite heavy into the petals, but uh, my roses, I, I did them more transparent, so now I have to balance the, the 
the daisies to that. See, and when I start to get too many petals on this daisy like that, it starts to take away from the uh, the rose. So I gotta be, it's a balancing act that you do here. So we'll just put in a little bit of the turns there. There we go. A little bit of those turns and colors and there. Just some movement ideas here. So we'll softly suggest some petals. I just keep wanting to get this just a little bit a little bit of light in there that would track that rose out just a touch here. But I gotta be careful that I don't get it too much here for that for all of that as well. So because I'm leading away from the painting here. so, And this is what I like to do when I do that. Take that in and out. There. It just softens that up. There, like that. Now, these little daisies I look at also have just like a little light touch right around the edges of the, of the centers. And that might be enough to really kind of decorate them up what I'm looking for. So they have a little light corner touch here right around the edge so that might be enough and it kind of picking up that white of the rose as well make sure it's a little softer as it goes back here so put it on maybe wipe your brush and then just take some of that off incorporate that into your colors there so it gets a little softer there a little touch of it back here just a little idea of it, and maybe one or two little strokes of it there. Just a little idea of it. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And we'll define our little red center there again into this one. Maybe a little touch of Hansa back into that. Just put that little flower back up on. It's important list here. There, so that pulls that center there. Maybe a bit of that red into this one. Here, with a little bit of that yellow. Right there, soften that in. Here. That looks pretty good. Last little touches of some greens around. Bright greens, colors, just break up some of this other colors and there and around bright yellow greens coming down here, little leaves, little daisy like touching leaves here. And there you have fun little painting but some of that beautiful yellow we had to begin with there got kind of covered up so sometimes I, I, I like to come back and like restate some of that movement down like that again so I like some of those vertical movements that we originally had in there so you know I'll come back in and pull some of that back down through the through the painting here like this just to pull those lines down and through see and that that just changes it up a bit adds a little different flair to that there there, that up and down movement. I like that because I have a lot of angle movement here. So having some up and down like this, let's take some of that brighter yellow green in that. That nice warm one there. And pull that down as well there. Hit that white edge of that rose there. See, that just looks really neat down like that. And uh, you can take some cooler leaf color here and reshape just the idea of a cool leaf or so here here or a little stem or something like that through there just to break up some of that that movement I like that just pulling down just a bit there and I try and I play this is you know I try different looks and see if they if it works you know if that if that look is working here you know, we get some cool colors here. Let's just pull that down here. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Pull that right down. 
that look. It gives a different look. It's a pretty look to it, and it's very, very different. Now, you could put a, you know, I, I've got, I could put a little bit uh, lighter yellow green right into that front, really to make a nice light edge to the leaf right up in here. That's a judgment call if you want to put some of these in here, some of these strokes in here like that, just to, because you can see what it does is it instantly gives more depth to the painting here. Some of these light touches like this do. do. It gives that bright yellow green and sets some of the other flowers back behind it. But that's a judgment call. Do you like it or not? That's that's your choice here to do. I like little sparkly things like this. I like little bits of color coming through like this. And and then some of that, I lost some of that cool color. So I'll just grab some nice light cool color. And we'll just streak a little bit of that cool color coming through here as well. Because that's pretty. That cool adds quite a bit to the painting. I like to paint the warms and cools. Yeah, I like that warm and cool touches to that. And that's really pretty. That's Put some of that cool right out there like that. And let that just even so lightly. That cool right out here. Boom. Right there. And you can take that cool right into your flowers too. But some of that cool would look great right over here. See how it sparks against that those other colors there and when I'm painting like this this is what I do I build it and build it build it if I and sometimes when you build you take something out so you got to go back and add it again you know the, the, the light and I don't ever not do anything because I might be afraid of taking something out I don't ever stop not doing something just because I'm afraid I might take it out you know I'm not worried about that now I'm going to Last thing I'm going to do here is build those stems up just a bit more. And um, here, and you can add like little V shapes here, which would be suggestive of little thorns and stuff if you want to make this more like a rose stem here. Or stem it out a couple of ways there. Give it a little more power to the stem and little V shapes here, a little stem or a little, uh, just, just very impressionistic. I don't like to get too tied up here in the stems. This isn't a painting of stems here. So we uh, we'll drop some in there, maybe down here like that. Just some light little movements down like that. Get some of that stems. There you have it. Okay. Thanks for joining me here. Look for more of our educational videos on JansenArtStudio.com or, or JansenArtStore.com. You can go to JansenArtStudio.com also. We also have the links right over there to the store. We have lots of them. We have over 600 or so DVDs now. You have lots of lessons, lots of different things to be painting there. Lots of uh, things in our Art of uh, Painting series. You can uh, take a look at those. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. Look for those other lessons. Go over to our YouTube channels. Check out all of our ch our paintings there, and um, you know all the lessons there. You can go to uh, David Jansen channel. You can go to the uh, the Art of Painting channel. You can go over to our Painted Simply channel, our subscriber channel, which we have over 200 videos on there for you to look at as well. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you over in some of those videos. Till then, have some fun. Try some fun little techniques, and just have a good day painting. I'll see you later. Bye bye.